Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. In this video, we're going to be setting up the girdle on the Mopar 440, but the process is similar on other types of engines. First of all, what is the purpose of a girdle? The girdle ties together the main bearing caps. All of the bearing caps are separate, they're not connected, which will allow the block to flex and the crankshaft to flex. You put a girdle on the bottom of the engine and this ties together the first four main caps or main bearings on a 440, depending on the engine you have, usually the front four, it doesn't tie into the rear, and it provides that stiffness, stiffness to the block and stiffness to the crankshaft so it doesn't bend. This setup for this is very time consuming, but it's critical you do it right so you don't actually introduce a stress into the block or cause it to, to twist or cause a stress before you put the uh, engine together. So you don't want to have a, a stress in, introduced or induced into the block. You don't want to twist it so that when you start it, it's already under stress. So this process is very slow. I'm going to go through it. Uh, it's time consuming. I won't go through every single one of the measurements, but I'll go through the basic steps and show you the finished product. Now, one of the most common questions I get is when do you need a girdle and an engine? For a small block, once you start going over 400, maybe 450 horsepower on a big block, when you start approaching 500 horsepower, you should really consider putting a girdle on the engine to prevent the block from twisting, prevent extra stress on the crank, and this will hold it nice and stiff. So that's when you really should use that. And when you're doing it, be very deliberate about your measurements, just take your time. And as I always say for everything else I do, always follow the manufacturer's instructions on how to install it, because if you install it wrong, you may be sorry. Since the measurements are taken off the oil pan rail, you want to make sure it's really clean. And I have a question for all you Mopar fanatics out there. I have I found when I was cleaning it, I found this stamping on the rear of the block by the rear main seal. It's a B. It's a hand stamp, you can tell, because it was double tapped. And I couldn't find out what the B would mean on the oil pan rail near the rear seal, rear main seal, uh, just past the last bolt hole. So if you know, leave a comment below. I couldn't find any information on it, so if you know, share it with us. This particular girdle, since I have studs and the nuts are well below the oil pan rail, you start by putting in these washers. These come with the kit, and it says to put all the washers on all the studs. This will be the starting point for the measurements we have to take for the shim pack. And as I said before, it only goes on the first four main caps. Since all of the nuts are different height, we need to get them even with the oil pan rail all the way across. And we're going to do that simply by putting a straight edge across the washers and measuring the gap between each one of the washers and the straight edge. And I'm going to do that for all eight of these positions on the caps. I find it's easiest to lay your shims out right next to where you're working so you can pick them up one at a time. I'll start with a 23, 24, and 25. And, of course, you got to be careful not to drop it inside the engine. And the, the washer may rock, so you might want to hold on to the back to make sure that it doesn't. And this is just too big. So I'm going to exchange a 25 for a 22, and that reduces the shim pack. It reduces this by one thousandths. And that just about fits. Even if I try to rock the washer and hold this down at the same time, it looks like... That's going to be it. So you add these together. 22, 23, 24 comes out to 69. <laughs> what a coincidence this is. 69 block. It's a 69, and I just write 69 right next to the uh, right next to the stud on the oil pan rail, so I know how big the shim pack needs to be on this particular stud. Now I'm going to continue this process for the other seven. Don't be afraid if you see big numbers from side to side. For example, this one is 57 and 62. 39, 47, 51, 69. So it's going to vary side to side and as you go back and forth. So the highest number I have is 75 and the lowest is 39, which give us a range of 36. Now it's just a matter of using the, the shims that they give you, add them together. You want to use the least amount of shims possible, so don't put like four or five three thousandths together. Use a minimum amount of shims possible. Build the shim pack up to the size that you need for each 
location on each stud. Now once you have your shims in place, simply do another check. Put the straight edge back across. First you want to check to see if it rocks. You'll feel it rock. If one's high, it'll rock for sure. Then if you hold it in the middle, if it's just, just lightly tight enough where you can't rotate it, it's good. If it's super loose, Add another, another shim and try again. But these are just a little bit dragging. And I think these are good. Do that for all of them. Check on the back as well. Just to make sure. Just as a sensibility check. And they feel good. Just so you know what I'm talking about. I checked these four or five times and I came back to this one in the back. If I sit this on here, it rocks. Ever so slightly. Hear that? It's rocking on this one. No. It's weird because it's only doing it on one side of the stud. If I rotate it, it still rocks, doesn't rock. So I'm wondering if I have to take this washer, might be a might be a burr on there. Flip the washer over. Try it again. See how that rocks? Take a look at that. Don't drop the shims in the engine. Hmm. No burr. Oh, wait a minute. There is a burr. A slight burr on that washer. I'm going to file that down a little bit. Okay, I think I got the burr filed off. Put the washer back on. My shims back on. It doesn't rock anymore. A slight burr on that washer caused that to rock. Now it's good. It definitely pays to repeat this process a few times because after I've gone through a few times I've identified a couple places where I've had to change shims. So go through a few times and take your time. This has got to be right. Take your time and check. Doesn't hurt to check a few times. This whole process takes at least an hour, so plan accordingly. Now they all seem to be now they all seem to be good. Close as they're gonna get. Not only did I change some of those, I verified, I checked the thickness of the shims with a micrometer just to make sure they didn't get mixed up in the bag as they were being put in. So sometimes they get mixed up, so I had to measure a couple because it didn't make sense. Took it out of a bag, put it on, and it seemed thicker than it was. I found one that was wrong. So use a micrometer, measure your shims. Now, next step, put in all the studs all the way around for the oil pan. Okay, all the studs are in place all the way around. The front four bolts are bolts, not studs, and the two in the back on the rear main cap, those are also bolts. Now I'm going to do a trial fit. There is an orientation. This side has to go up. This cutout has got to go on this side, so you have room for the oil pickup, oil pump pickup tube, which goes right in here. Usually when you have studs, and when that screw is on there, or the nut is on the stud, when this comes around, it comes really, really close. So we'll set that, that depth, but you just want to make sure you have clearance for that. Also, just really check, even though it looks good, check to make sure the dipstick is going to clear. And the final check is to turn the engine over to make sure nothing binds anywhere. Check all the counterweights. Make sure you have clearance between all the counterweights. And they all look pretty good. So turn this around so it should be at top dead center where the keyway is roughly at two o'clock, right around there. Okay. This is your last chance to check all the torques. So I took off all of my shim packs 
verified that all of the main caps are torqued to 90, checked all my rod bolts to make sure they are still torqued. Once you put that girdle on, you will not be able to check anything. If you do retorque a fastener and it moves, you have to recheck the height, redo the height to make sure you have the right gap because you're going to drive the fastener down, you're going to create a larger gap, and the girdle won't fit right. So if it does move, recheck the gap. The last step is to put a thin bead of silicone all the way around here, really thin, you don't want to put it too thick. Thin bead of uh, silicone around the entire pan rail, oil pan rail, and put this in place. You put the bolts on and you torque this in place. Then you're done. I'm not going to do that because I want to check my oil pickup depth. I want to put the gasket and the oil pan on here and make sure that is right before I actually torque this in place. Because if that's off, then you got to tear it all apart and it's going to be cleaning time. So, um, before I bolt this down, I want to do that first and we'll do that in the next video. Setting up a girdle does take patience and precision. So take your time, check, recheck, go back and check before, check your torques, make sure everything is okay before you put that girdle on and you'll have no problems. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.